I've finally cracked it. How to take an ATEM ISO DaVinci project and convert that into a multicam clip and file that you can use in the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve. So keep watching this tutorial and I'll show you how you can do it too. So once you've taken your SSD out from your ATEM, plugged it into your computer, you'll get something that looks like this with all of your files from the ATEM on it. So you've got your video ISOs, your mix feed and your audio folder, but importantly, you've got your DaVinci file, uh, file here as well. So if we just open it up in DaVinci, I've already got it open here. This is what you'll get, a timeline that looks similar to this with all of your cuts already laid out on the timeline. And now, what you would usually do with DaVinci Resolve is use their really good, I love this, the cut page here, go into the cut page. This gives you the ability to quickly make edits so we can change points here in the timeline. The best thing of course about the cut page is you've got the sync bin so you can quickly see all of your camera angles here. You can play them through to see all of them. Uh, but what I find hard about the cut page is if you want to change an angle, it's a bit of a laborious task to do it. You know, you've got to set your in point by clicking I, then scroll across to find to your out point, click O. Then let's say we want to have the wide camera here instead, go into the wide camera, make sure that we've got video only on here in the left hand side, and then finally use the source overwrite button to put the wide camera over the top. And if we just go back to the edit, tab here now and zoom in, we can see that wide camera is now placed on top. So if we play it through, there it is. But with traditional multicam clips, what you'd be able to do in other editors and even multicam clips in DaVinci is a bit like what we've got here with the sync bin. You'd be able to just play your timeline through and click on the angles to cut to them. And that for me is a much faster way of working. I have been looking for ages of a way of converting an A10 project file into a multicam clip so that you can do this. And I've finally found one. So let's get into it, let's do it. I'm just gonna get rid of this here and we're gonna go back to the timeline, I'll zoom out. So this is our, our project file that we're starting with. And we're actually gonna do a bit of housekeeping first to make this a lot quicker and easier. So if we go into the media tab in the bottom here, the first thing we're gonna do is actually just give our clips a color. So I'm gonna click on camera one here gonna right hand click on the clip and I'm gonna to go to clip color and I like to do it in order. So I'll choose orange for camera one, apricot for camera two and go down the list. So let's just go to camera two, go clip color, apricot, camera three, clip color, yellow. Do make sure you're doing clip color and not clip flags and things like that. You don't wanna get them mixed up. So uh, number four will be lime, number five will be Olive. Now I did have a camera six here, but I know we didn't cut to it at all. So I don't need to do that. Same with seven and eight. There was no inputs going in. So I don't need to assign those clip colors. You only need to assign cameras that you know you cut to and you used. So I could assign one to camera six, but because I know we didn't cut to it at all in the mix, I can just forget about it. So now what I'm going to do with all of those colors selected, and you can see we've got the color in the top right hand side of each clip. I'm actually just gonna select the cameras that we used here. So as I say, we use camera one to five. So I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard and select those. And we can see they all appear there with their clip colors. And we can actually see where they were used on the timeline. If we just see the little orange markers, that's kind of through the master timeline that where they were used. We didn't use camera four too much. It was a bit of a behind the scenes look. So clip colors have been assigned now. Now we're gonna actually create a multicam clip using these camera angles. So if we select all of them here, right hand clip and choose create new multicam clip using selected clips. And we've got to fill this out a little bit. So I'm gonna call this clip multicam underscore V1. Do a capital V. Make sure you've set the frame rate to the, the frame rate that you filmed in. The Angle sync here is going to be time code. One of the beauties of the ATEM is it uh, sets the same time code for all of the camera inputs, so we can use that as a way of syncing. The angle name, again, the ATEM helps us out here. It assigns a metadata of a camera number to all of the inputs, so we can use that as well. And if you had start and st started and stopped the recording a lot of times throughout the day, let's say you could select this option here, detect clips from the same camera. Mine was a one take. Thing, so I'm gonna leave that unticked. 
And I do also untick move source clips because I like to leave them in the original position personally. So uh, we'll click create here. That will generate our multicam clip here. And one of the real key important things to make this work is we need to put that in its own folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up to the master level here and I'm gonna right hand click, choose create or choose new bin. And we're gonna call that multicam. And then I'm just gonna go back into camera one because that's where it would have placed the multicam when we created it and drag that into the multicam folder. So now if we look at this multicam at the moment, let's open it up in a timeline here. And there's two reasons to do this because I always like to double check the multicams. If we open it up in a timeline by right clicking it and clicking open in timeline, we can see we haven't got any of our cuts anymore. But don't worry, we're gonna get them back. The other thing we can see, and I don't know if it's a bug with DaVinci or what it is, but sometimes, it places one of the clips on the timeline, but doesn't fully extend it out. So just watch out for that. That's why I always go into the timeline of the multicam clip and just extend that all the way. It's all in sync and everything. It just doesn't, doesn't extend one of the clips or two of the clips sometimes for me all the way out. As I say, I don't know why, but I can just do it and fix it manually. So now if we go back to our normal timeline, this, this is our, if we go into our master, this is our actual timeline that the ATEM created for us, you'll notice it's got a bit funky with uh, colors. Those are the clip colors that we assign to the different angles. So if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see camera number one is orange. There we go. Camera number two is our apricot color. And we've got, if we zoom in even more, maybe here, we've got some yellow in there, which is camera number three and some green, which is camera number four as well. Or that was actually camera number five. That's why it's looking a bit funky, but that's going to help us when we come to convert that uh, the multicam into using these clip angles. So the other thing to notice is down at the bottom here, it is all orange. That is because the way that the ATEM creates its uh, ATEM ISO file is it uses the audio from camera one, but it actually doesn't matter because when the ATEM records, the same audio goes in all eight camera angles. So uh, yeah, don't worry about that. That's normal. So now that we've got everything prepped and ready, we can actually start assigning, basically converting our multicam clip and carrying over those camera cuts to the multicam clip. But before we do that, let's talk about live graphics for your streams with the sponsor of today's video, Uno. Uno is the free broadcast quality graphics platform designed for live streamers. It gives you instant access to hundreds of easily customizable graphics templates from lower thirds to sports scoreboards, news tickers, and so much more. Imagine you're live streaming a soccer match, for example, and you want to display the score on screen. With Uno, it's possible within minutes. Just head over to overlays.uno and sign up for a free account, and you'll have access to a wide range of pre-made templates that you can easily filter through until you find the perfect style for your stream. Customizing and controlling your overlay is simple. You can do it right from your web browser on any device, whether it be a computer, phone, or tablet. Adjust team names, customize the color scheme to match your brand colors, and even add team logos by pasting a link to their hosted images. Once you're happy with your graphic, getting it into your broadcast is just as easy. Click the copy output URL button and add it as a browser source to your preferred streaming software. Whether you use OBS, Streamlabs, or vMix, for example, Uno seamlessly integrates with your setup. But it doesn't stop there. From anywhere in the world, you can update and control your graphics live. Animate your overlays on and off, update scores as they fly in, all from one web page. And if you prefer physical buttons, they've got you covered too, as Uno now offers a free Stream Deck plugin that allows you to control your graphics directly from your Stream Deck device. This is just a small glimpse of the countless number of overlays available on Uno. So if you wanna up the quality of your live broadcast graphics, head over to the link in my description or sign up at overlays.uno. Best of all, it's completely free to use right now. And within minutes, you can have high quality animated graphics added to your streams. Plus the team at Uno are always looking for your suggestions and ideas of new templates to be added. So if you think you've got something that you wanna see on the platform, send them a message using the feedback form on their website. So on with the tutorial, let's crack on with assigning our multicam to these different camera angles. So we're gonna start, we're gonna go over to our multicam folder here and at this point, again, I'll just stress, just make sure that inside the multicam folder, the only thing that's in there is your multicam clip. We're gonna right hand click on the multicam clip, go to switch multicam video angle, 
make sure that's set to camera one to start and do the same for the audio angle as well. It'll be, it will become clear why in just a second. So that's the first step. Second step we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to our master here. Then I'm gonna go up to timeline, select clips with clip color, and we're gonna select our first color for our first angle, which is orange. That in the timeline is gonna select all the times that you see orange. So therefore, every single clip on the audio track here is gonna be selected, but also all the times that the camera was cut to camera one on the video layer is also gonna be selected. We're then gonna right hand click on one of those selected clips. So I'm just gonna use this first clip here. It needs to be a selected clip, so one of the colors that we're, we've chosen. Right click and untick where it says conform lock enabled. You need to untick that. It will create this little red icon next to the clip that you've clicked on. In fact, I think it will go on every clip. The next step, and the final step before we repeat the process is to go up to your current timeline here, right hand click, go to timelines, go to reconform from bins, and then we need to fill out this form. You only need to do it once, but you need to watch carefully and make sure you do it the exact same way that I am. So in the drop-down list, we're gonna choose selected clips, not all clips, and we're gonna tick this, this box that says set clips to conform lock enabled after conform. Then the really important part is we're gonna untick the master and the only option we want ticked here is multicam. And the only thing we want in that multicam folder is our multicam file. From the right hand side, it should look like this by default, but basically the only thing you want ticked is timecode and source timecode rather than record timecode. Then hit okay and watch what happens. It's now replaced everywhere that we had selected with orange with multicam clip V1 camera one. So it's now using that multicam clip and it's using angle number one, camera one from that clip. And you'll see the bottom obviously is because we had, uh, we had all of those selected. So all of the audio is camera one audio and then all the times that we had camera one selected, it's replaced it, replaced it with multicam angle number one. We can now repeat the process for each individual angle and you can get quite fast once you get used to it. So again, I'll just show you that process again. First thing, go over to multicam right hand click on the multicam, go to switch multicam video angle. Now we're gonna choose angle camera two. We could at this point do the audio as well, but because the audio goes to, the same audio goes to um, every track, we don't need to. In most cases, when you're using other cameras, you'd want to, to stick this the audio the same anyway. So I'm just gonna do the video, it will work exactly, uh, it will work perfectly fine. So all we've done there, right hand click, switch multicam video angle, camera two, now I've got to go back to master, go to timeline, select clips with color, choose our second color, which is apricot. Click on one of the clips, which is selected. Choose to untick conform lock enabled. Then right hand click on the timeline up here. Go to timelines, reconform from bins. Again, these are all now remembered, so we can just instantly click OK. And now they have all turned blue. And we just keep repeating the process. So right click, multicam, video angle to camera three, go back to the master, timeline, select clips with colors and choose our third one, which is yellow. Right click on the clip, untick, and then go to timelines, reconform from bins and click okay. And you just uh, keep repeating the process. We'll probably speed this part up and then I'll show you what you get when you've done all of it. So if I just zoom out now, we should see our whole timeline, all of the audio is green, and importantly, all of our video layers are blue, which means we've finished, every single, uh, every single angle has now been conformed. And importantly, if we just zoom in here, let's go maybe to the start, we can see multi, we've got multicam, which is the multicam clip, camera one, which is correct, camera three, We've got camera two as well. So that has been carried over correctly. So this is now a multicam clip with all of our cuts from our 8M ISO project carried over. We haven't had to do anything crazy like remake all the cuts or anything like that. They are all there. And to prove that, we're still in the edit tab. If I open up, use this little button up here to open up my second viewer, I'm gonna close the inspector to create a bit more space. And now click on this icon here on the left of the, the left-hand viewer go to multicam. There we've got all of our angles which we can scrub through. And importantly, if I was to change an angle, usually 
uh, if you were doing this, you would want to just have the video angle selected so it doesn't change the audio to follow the, the video that you select. But because again, we're using an ATEM where the audio is the same across all eight of its camera recordings, we can actually keep it on both, it doesn't matter. But watch what happens. Let's say actually as we played through, we wanted to cut to the wide angle. All I need to do is click that. You can see in the timeline, the cut is made. It's cut there on the viewer. And we've still got the ability to kind of roll the cut if we need here. We've also got what I find really useful. Let's say actually we don't, we've decided we don't want the wide. We can right hand click, go to switch multicam angle. And we can change that for example, over to camera one. Or we could do the same really quickly, change it to camera two. So it just gives you a bit more speed and flexibility in my opinion than the, the cut tab. Uh, and although it is a little bit of a process and a bit of a laborious task to be to do this process to create the multicam clip in the first place, I find it takes about five minutes. I've kind of got the speed down now it's gonna save you a hell of a lot of time. And I've been looking for a way, as I said at the beginning of the video, I've been looking for a way of doing this for so long, haven't found anything, and it's just been through tinkering around with DaVinci that I have created this solution. So let me know if it works for you. It's worked for me every time so far. Let me know if it works for you. If someone out there knows a better and quicker method, please do get down in the comments below, share it in the comments so that we can all benefit from this. But importantly as well, if you're gonna try this out on your shoot, let me know in the comments how you find it. Because as I say, it works perfectly for me. It's massively sped up my workflow and has meant that I'm able to kind of use a more traditional multicam workflow and not have to always work in the cut page. Let me know if you're gonna make use of this down in the comments below. And also, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell for more tips and tricks videos like this. If you found this video useful, please do just take two seconds to hit the thumbs up button. It really does help the channel uh, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to do that. And if you need particular help with your setup, whether it be building your own studio, building your podcast workflow, or you need help with DaVinci Resolve and editing, make sure you get in contact. My email address is on screen now and we can schedule in a one-to-one -one consulting session just for you to crack all of those things. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.